Hello, and welcome to, I'm getting alerts, notifications. Welcome to An Inquisitive Crafter, episode 24. I thought I'd give you a little bit of change of pace. I'm trying to put it, my yard looks awful. <laughs> I sit here and put my arm here, there. Look at my beautiful yard. Oh well, you're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> Um, my name is Susie. I live in the North Texas area, Dallas, Texas area, and this is my space where I talk about all the things I've been working on. I don't have any completed objects this week, but I do have some acquisitions and some uh, some other stuff I want to talk to you about. Hope you have some water or coffee or whatever. I have water, sorry, that's what I should have said. I'm drinking water. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm working on right now. The first thing I'm working on is my That Away shawl. This is a shawl by, I'm looking at my notes down here, um, by Carissa Browning, and it is the 2024 DFW Fiberfest um, knit along or crochet along and then the knit along is this away. I'm doing the that away, the crochet one. I'm keeping it in my adornment bag by uh, this was last year's pixie and party bag I believe and I am doing my shawl in the colors uh, a naughty yarn N-O-T-I in the colors optimism optimism and Fortune, I think. Fortune. And look at it. Okay, ignore all the ends, but oh my gosh. Look at it. It's beautiful. Oh, a gnome beard. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I love it so much. Um, it is like 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening. I have no clue what time it is this late. Oh, I have a clock right here. 6.30, 6.30 in the evening. So the lighting is not great, but I think this is gorgeous. Um, I'm not gonna get this done before DFW Fire Fest, but I'm gonna keep telling myself I can, so I'll work on it. But mm, I have a little, I do not know what this is. It's, it was a pigskin party charm. I think also from Adornets, and I think it's an apple cider or a beer, but I'm calling it apple cider. I think it says, oh, it says beer. I thought it was a corny dog at first because <laughs> I don't drink beer, so I don't recognize beer as a thing. But that's a good project. I'm loving it. I love the colors. And this was, um, I talked about this in my last podcast, but uh, this was, these were colors that I picked out from, I think, my first fiber fest so it's pretty good to be using them all right the second project that I is getting all my time right now is also in an adornance bag my known bag and this is the mystery gnome let me see which one oh, someone to write gnome about by Sarah Shira and I'm only on clue one so if you haven't started clue one, look away. But if you have started, don't worry, because I haven't started clue two yet. Um, here's my yarn. Here's my other yarn. And then you'll see my other yarn in a minute. So, I am working on, I think these were gonna be arms. So this is mystery bit number two. And you had to make two of them. And the other one, I'm super proud because I've never used, any, ooh, it's so glowy, any of my try-on tubing. And so I'm finally using my try-on tubing. I think this is from Hypnotic Yarn. Um, but I put one, you had to put it on waist yarn, so I just put it on my try-on tubing. So I was super happy to use that. Of course, my try-on tubing is like really long. Try-on tubing is something you can fit on the end of your knitting needle and then you can slide your work onto the bigger project so you can try it on without accidentally dropping stitches. 
So you'd put one end on this needle, one end on the other needle, then you could slip your project on if it was like a sweater or something. But mine's a gnome sleeve, so don't need all that. And then I have completed the nose, which I am keeping in my There's Beauty and Being Kind by Walt Whitman. I don't, um, I got this in Yarnable, I think. Um, and I like it. Here's my nose. So I'm very happy. I'm ready. I was cranking away on sleeve number two and I'm ready to be, I want to be done. I've got 20 rounds to go, but I'm ready to start the next project because I get to use the multicolor yarn. Plus I want to get caught up. I might be behind. Probably the school teacher in me. Although, oh, mosquitoes. It's okay though. I got, a, got something for that. Um, I think uh, that keeps me that's because I'm a teacher is why I don't like to be behind. Although I was behind a lot in school. Okay, I have acquisitions that I've been saving for a very long time. All right, acquisition number one. I'm keeping in a Walmart bag. Hold on, there's acquisition number two. Let me organize myself. You can look at the top of my head for a second. Acquisition number three. Acquisition, oh, here it is. Okay, so I got my Yarnable for August, and the um, color wave is called Neon Graffiti. It came with a rubber ducky zipper pull that I gave to my son, uh, my oldest son, Mark, because he loves rubber ducks, and his um, game name, his gaming names all have to do with ducks duck lord and stuff like that um so i gave that to him but i'll put a picture here and then it came with in these cute little zipper pouches it came with some mosquito don't scratch it patch it the original itch relief patch so as i'm getting bit by mosquitoes then I'll be able to use my Itch Relief patch. All right, and then mosquitoes don't bother me too much, so that's why I'm still out here. Um, is that all that came with that? Oh, and then, this was so cute. Here's the top of my head again. The 80s called, they want their ruler back. Warning, may result in extreme crafting. It's one of those, um, rulers that change colors with the, the your body heat so i thought that was cute i watched um a podcast now i can't remember where the podcaster said that she was going to she's redoing her craft room and she's going to hang it up in her craft room because she thought that was cute i thought that was a great idea i thought it was funny because when i got mine it was so hot the ruler had gone completely pink and you couldn't do anything like touching it did nothing it was just all pink all this hot pink so right now it's a lovely, I don't know, it was, the high was 82, I think today. So that's really nice, but it's going to get hot again, sadly. Okay. And then I got my September yarnable. Oh, I didn't show the yarn. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So I get the DK weight, um, uh, their plush DK, which is at 8515. Um, Superwash Merino Nylon. Um, the mini skein I get is 80s, that this was uh, 80s Pop Princess. Now you may have heard me complain in the past that I am not super understanding because I have no art color sense in me, why Yarnable picks mini skeins that don't go with their main skein. Well, Maybe they heard because I love this one. This is Neon Graffiti. Look at that. That goes. So I'm super happy with this. I love this so much. So, so much. 
and I want to knit something with it. But I've got some other things I need to do. <sighs> someday, someday. Okay, let's show you my September Yarnival. So my September Yarnival, top of my head again, came with a apple bag clip set. One of them broke in my package. That's okay which is great because my kids are always losing my chip clips. So now I have this. Oh, it's also great for holding photos, notes, papers, and receipts. That might be cute. Hang some things up. Mmm, give me some ideas. I don't know. I thought that was cute. And it also came with, oh, the, the uh, topic was Appley Ever After came with it. I was supposed to have this yesterday morning. Apple cinnamon quick mug muffin mix by Sweet Lo Lo Logic. Logic, I can't spell. Read. I can't wait to try this. This is keto friendly, four grams of sugar per bag, ready in minutes. I'm having it tonight. Gluten free, dairy free. Hmm. Doesn't actually sound very good, does it? <laughs> but we're gonna see. And then it came with a Swedish dishcloth, which you can use 200 times in this apples. And I can't wait to use this. I'm always looking for a dishcloth lately, it seems like. So now I have one for 200 uses. Do you like, keep a tally or will it just fall apart? I don't know, I'll keep you posted. And then the yarn. Okay, my mini skein, this is again, Superwash, Merino and Nylon. Uh, plush TK and their 8515 base, uh, plush TK base. And this is insider information. So good. Insider. Get it? Get it? <laughs> and then the yarn, happily ever after. These go so well. I don't even like these colors, and I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. So. It's the 8th of September, so hopefully everybody's already seen their September Yarnable and I didn't ruin anybody's surprise. Okay. Then one more acquisition. I am participating in the, what is it called? Happy... Heads MCAL from... Nikki's Homemade Crafts, and it's a mystery MCAL that starts tomorrow. Happy Heads, Mystery Crochet Along. We're focusing on making a hat that will make you and everyone around you smile and happy. And oh, more than 1,300 crocheters have already signed up. Have I signed up? I hope so. And I'm making mine in Mandala Ombre Serene yarn. They had a new um, a new yarn, a new Mandala yarn that they were recommending. A Mandala Gradient. Bet I couldn't find it because I was just shopping at Walmart. And so we'll have to gradiate with that. And then my daughter will like it because it's pink. So I got two skeins of that, I'm excited about that. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was, is the stuff I'm taking for my class, my classes at DFW Fiber Fest, which is in two weeks or a week from Thursday. Ooh, so excited. So I'm taking three classes. I am taking Toe Up Socks, taught by Robin Chichula, and I've always wanted to take a class by her. I admire her so much, and she said to bring a variety of um, crochet hooks, D to G, and then bring some sock yarn. So I have this sock yarn, which is a yarnable sock yarn. I think it's called Grape Crush, and um, I made my sister some slippers out of this, I believe. And so I'm gonna take this. 
Can you hear that? There's a bagpiper whose wife won't let him practice at home. So he practices in the park um, on the other side of our neighborhood. And I just heard him. I don't know what that noise was. Hope that wasn't his bagpipe breaking. Okay. And then I'm just kidding. His bagpipe did not break. In my whimsy stitches bag. Do you see him? Do you see him? I'm taking a class called, well, I'm taking a class called Knit Smart. Um, taught by Steve, uh, Stephanie Pearl McPhee. I'm so excited because I've read so many of her books. I'm really excited and there's no homework for that. And then we're, um, I'm going to Friday night bingo. Um, so that'll be fun. And then on Saturday, I'm going to Stephanie Pearl McPhee's uh, Distract, Deploy, Dilute. And she said to bring wildly variegated yarn with another yarn that is in the wildly variegated and then one that isn't. So I am using Yarnable yarn again. It could be DK or fingering, mine is DK um, in the colorway Spellbound. That's pretty wild. This was a 2023 October colorway. And then my uh, color that's in it is Sorceress Secret. And then my color that's not is uh, Cherry Blossom Bliss. So, hopefully these will work. I think they will be amazing. Can you hear them? Kind of sounds like the ice cream truck, except no ice cream truck comes down our block. And then I also found my little skeleton stitch marker, uh, stoppers, stitch stoppers. So that I keep in this bag. So, I'm very happy. Um, what else is going on there? Um, I started reading uh, a book by Patricia Briggs called Moon something, Moon Called. It's a book about oh, werewolves, and but the main character is not a werewolf. And I have seen it before and not wanted to read it. But I was looking in a fantasy sci-fi Facebook page, um, the, a group that I'm in, and somebody was asking for something to read, and they said, don't let the cover fool you. It's not like what it looks like. This is the cover. This is why I've never wanted to read this book. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. That's not the cover. This is the cover. It's the cover. So that doesn't seem very interesting to me, but I do like werewolf stories <laughs> and um, I like fantasy, anything. And so, and Faye, I like that. So th this is pretty good. I'm, I picked it up and got sucked right in and now I'm on page 87 and I just started reading it today. So pretty good. I got up really early today and uh, worked on my lesson plans. I need to figure out my uh, life skills music, general music class lesson plan for the week. My sister's been sending me some good ideas, so I really appreciate that. Uh, I heard from my roommate from college, Janetta. Hey, Janetta, um, who said that she's an avid fan of my podcast, which is so sweet. <laughs> and so funny but so sweet and that she is working on her crochet and that makes me so happy so <sighs> love it and then um oh i teach a uh, or i lead a crochet club after school and our first meeting i teach at a middle school um an orchestra teacher but i do this crochet club and our first meeting is tomorrow and the kids are real excited and I picked out, um, we're gonna work on slippers. I found two patterns that I kind of merged together um, to, so the kids could, well, okay, let me backtrack. The kids that are coming tomorrow are kids who have either been in crochet club in previous years or they already know how to crochet. They have to know how to single crochet and chain, chain and single crochet. And then they're going to the next meeting, they're going to teach any newcomers that come, how to single crochet, you know, chain and single crochet. I mean, I'll be there to help. 
And I have another teacher who wants to co-sponsor with me, but she doesn't know how to crochet, so I'm teaching her tomorrow. Um, and we're making slippers. That's gonna be our first project. I used to do like how I learned, okay, well, not how I learned to crochet, I learned from a book. But when I took classes as a grown-up, um, I was taught like the sampler way. Like you just learn single crochet and then you rip it out and then you learn double crochet and then you rip it out or you keep it as just one project that doesn't do anything. And uh, so when I first started Crochet Club years ago, that's the way I did it. But the kids didn't like that. Like I noticed they, they weren't really into that. So I started making, um, having them do like a project for their learning piece. So one year we made little purses, um, like phone cases. Um, one year we made headbands. One year we did blanket squares for the Linus project. Um, that was one of my personal favorites, but they, the kids do better when their first project is something for them or for someone that they like. So we're making slippers and they're made out of squares. So you just make a square that is set to a specific side. I found two projects, I mean two patterns that both have the same chart in them, like the inches for the, for your foot size. And uh, then you seam it up, like fold it over, seam it up. And I think that'll be a good project, a good first project. And then our second project, is going to be, I think, um, bandanas, like little hair cutesy bandanas. So I think that'll be good. I think my husband's looking at me. Oh, you have to be able to hear the bagpipes now. <laughs> He's trying to shut the blinds and he can't. Just twist the thing. Okay, well, anyway, I rambled on enough. So I hope you are um, being inquisitive in finding your own projects to complete. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you next time.